There are three things we know about Chaos Theory Mode for Jurassic World Evolution 2. Each Jurassic Park and Jurassic World movie will get a what-if scenario in Chaos Theory Mode. In some, we will be building theme parks, in others, facilities. The Chaos Theory Mode for The Lost World Jurassic Park is going to be building the San Diego Park. All of that begs the question, what are the what-if scenarios going to be for the other four movies? The original Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park 3, Jurassic World, and Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. That is what this video is going to be about. We are going to try to figure out what those alternate timelines are going to be like. At what point in the respective movies will we break from the established timeline and go our own way? And what is going to be our objective from that point on? Hello everyone, thank you so much for checking out yet another video about Jurassic World Evolution 2. If you're like me and you just can't get enough of this game, even before it has launched, consider subscribing to the channel. My mission is to keep you informed and entertained until November 9th and beyond. To infinity and beyond. For me, Chaos Theory Mode is one of the most exciting prospects of the new game. I love Jurassic World Evolution and I love, love the movies. So for a game mode to really bring those two as close together as possible is something I'm definitely looking forward to. And if you are too, this is the video for you. I've already got to play a little bit of the San Diego Chaos Theory Mode thanks to Frontier and ever since I've wanted more. But what is more going to look like? If you have any ideas, share them in a comment down below. Or if you like or agree with any of my guesses, give the video a thumbs up. This is going to be a lengthy video. We have a lot to talk about. So get a Red Bull, get an unbranded energy drink, settle in, get started on your essay in the comment section about your own ideas, and let's do this. We can't exactly start at the beginning. First, let me quickly tell you about some of the findings from the San Diego Chaos Theory mode that sets the tone for what we can expect from the others. The Lost World Jurassic Park. Intelligent murder machine bested by gymnastics routine. Or... Man goes looking for Sarah Harding. Unbeknownst to anyone except his traitorous nephew, John Hammond had a second island, Isla Sorna, where the dinosaurs were incubated before being brought over to the park on Isla Nublar. The dinosaurs now roam free on that island. While Hammond wants the ecosystem to be studied and preserved, his nephew and new head of InGen wants it pillaged. Ian Malcolm goes to Isla Sorna to fetch his girlfriend, while InGen goes to fetch dinosaurs for a park in San Diego. Both crews suffer losses, but InGen does manage to take an adult T-Rex and its infant to the mainland. But their attempts to turn the animal into a zoo attraction gets thwarted and the two dinosaurs go back to Sorna which will from then on be protected against poachers and human interference. The Chaos Theory mode is titled Jurassic Park San Diego. It proposes an alternate reality where InGen got their way and the San Diego Park is being realized with dinosaurs being flown over from Isla Sorna including the iconic T-Rex pair. It starts with an opening monologue that sets the scene which closes in what is the same and what is new in this what if scenario and it poses the important what if question with the question in this example being what if Jurassic Park San Diego had become reality even though I didn't get to play out the entire chaos theory mode for San Diego in the little time I had I do think that we can conclude that there is little story to it aside from the obvious tie into the movie as far as I was able to tell it was a pretty straightforward park build combining elements of the movie like the Rexes and the amphitheater with familiar gameplay style and existing game mechanics. And some things are just ignored out of existence, like the baby T-Rex. It was pretty chill. Again, I only got to play an hour, so maybe some madness would have happened later on, but I'm not really expecting anything too crazy. These alternate universes in and of themselves are not going to be too crazy, I think. They're going to stick quite close to the movies. It's not going to be like, and what if aliens then landed? What's interesting to note is that in this alternate reality, technically the bad guys won. The movie was all about stopping the creation of San Diego, but in the Chaos Theory mode, 
we as the player are actually directly involved in making it a success. All of that will inform my predictions for what the other what-if scenarios are going to be. I'll be approaching this realistically in the sense that I will be reusing game mechanics and gameplay styles that we already know will be in the game. This is a park management slash park building game after all, so none of these predictions are going to involve a first person boots on the ground kind of gameplay, no matter how much we would want a game like that. And sometimes we could be going straight against the philosophy of the movie itself. Now let's rewind to 1993 and go back to the original Jurassic Park. Three scientists go on a trip and have a bad time. Or flea circus gone bad. Or girls gone wild. Eccentric entrepreneur John Hammond has built a theme park on a tropical island with the intention of showing people the dinosaurs that his scientists have brought back from extinction. Unfortunately, during an understaffed weekend, just as a storm hits the island, an employee sabotages the operation, setting the dinosaurs loose on the island. Yada yada yada, clever girl, yada yada yada. It is a damn near perfect movie. The management of the park, however, leaves to be desired. So where do we come in? When do we come in? And what happens when we take control? Because from then on, everything can be different from what we saw happen in the movie. That is chaos theory. That is the butterfly effect after all. The chaos theory mode is simply called Jurassic Park. I can only assume that this story will focus on that iconic park and hopefully they'll start us off with a better recreation of it than the hot mess they tried to peddle as the original Jurassic Park in the Return to Jurassic Park DLC from the first game. This is the chaos theory mode that I struggled with the most in terms of coming up with a what if scenario. From a park building perspective, keeping in mind that we're playing Jurassic World Evolution 2 and not like Dino Crisis or anything, what are the pivotal moments that we can step into? Honestly, I could only identify two. So I think for Jurassic Park Chaos Theory, the question could either be, what if Nedry had never sabotaged the park? Or what if the park hadn't been abandoned? I'm leaning towards that first what if scenario and I'll explain more in depth when we get to one of the later movies in the franchise. But for Jurassic Park, I think the iconic park itself should be in the spotlight. And I'd also expect that they don't want to do the same thing they did with Return to Jurassic Park, which was rebuilt after everything had gone to hell. I don't think they want to rehash that. And the only thing they can avoid rehashing that is to take us back further. So. What if Nedry had never sabotaged the park? Story-wise, I think that's going to put us in an interesting and unique position because everything will be new. Everything is still in its infancy stages. They mentioned during the live stream that young Dr. Henry Wu would be coming back in his pre-villainous role. So this chaos theory mode could really play on that story of inexperience and uncertainty. We're still researching a lot of stuff. We're still focused on finding dinosaur DNA. We have to figure out why our Triceratops keep Keeps getting sick, that sort of stuff. Maybe some of the challenges along the way could be that incubations fail more often, or the mission forces us to use fencing that we technically know isn't going to be strong enough. It could be a bit of a learn from your rookie mistakes kind of gameplay as you build the original park. A possible wrench that could get thrown into the plants could be the storm. Maybe in this alternate timeline, the storm hits the park more severely. It would be really, really funny if at some point we got a pop-up with two options. Give our computer programmer a raise, yes or no. And if we choose yes, it's going to cost us money, but nothing happens. And if we choose no, some sabotage happens, not to the park ending extent of the movie, but maybe the raptors get set loose or the power fails and we have to reboot it, just as a little nod to the mistake that John Hammond made. And when we've dealt with that, Ian Malcolm could come in with a snarky comment like, it could have been much worse, but luckily, We'll never know just how much worse. All of that as a big wink to the movie. So we're skipping The Lost World and we're gonna go ahead to the third movie in the franchise and the movie that put the franchise in a coma for about 15 years. Jurassic Park 3. Crazy couple kidnaps two scientists. Or a tragedy, man loses hat. Or a story of heroism. Man saves hat. Dr. Alan Grant, still dealing with the trauma from his visit to Jurassic Park, gets tricked into going to Isla Sorna by a couple searching for their son. While on the island, they find the research facilities there, which have been ravaged by a storm. By finally being able to locate their satellite phone, they manage to call for help and get saved. Well, 
not all of them. For this Chaos Theory mode, I don't think we will be building a park. It doesn't make sense for this movie. This movie is not about a theme park. We're still building a park builder, of course, but we know from the campaign that building a theme park can be replaced with building a facility. Again, two options that I consider most likely are, what if the storm had never destroyed the facility on Sorna? Or what if InGen had come back to Sorna? You might be thinking, how does this specifically relate to the plot of Jurassic Park 3? Like, how does Eric come into play? How does Alan fit into this? Well, really, I don't see how they can directly incorporate the story of Jurassic Park 3, since it's very first person based. So I think the what if scenario is going to be set before that movie and then effectively erase JP3's story from existence in this specific timeline. Because again, once we step in everything that comes after, canon will be different. Also note that the chaos theory mode for Jurassic Park 3 is titled Isla Sorna Site B. Maybe all we're using from this movie is the location, not the story, not the characters. Since the San Diego Chaos Theory mode skipped on Sorna, it makes sense that this time around we do go back there and they fully utilize the Site B excitement that we all have. I think option two could be the case. What if InGen came back to Sorna? Specifically, what if Dr. Wu came back to Sorna? I already theorized that they could undo disaster in the Chaos Theory mode for the first movie. So if that's the case, then I don't think they're going to rehash that again for JP3 and say that the storm never destroyed the facility there. I'm thinking the storm happened and the facility did get destroyed and the dinosaurs that were there were set free as we know from the movie universe. The Chaos Theory mode will be set a couple of years after the storm destroyed the facility. Because we know that the facility was used to incubate the dinosaurs, nurture them for only a couple of months, and then ship them off to the park on Isla Nublar. Meaning that at the moment the storm hit, all the dinosaurs that were at the facility on Sorna were juveniles. Because all older dinosaurs go to the park. There's no reason to keep adults on Sorna. And Frontier has said many, many times that they are giving us adult dinosaurs, no babies. So we literally can't be there on the island before all the escaped dinosaurs have matured. So we come to the islands to rebuild the facility. That is going to be our first task. And from there on, the mission will be focused on research. On one hand, researching DNA to incubate more species and possibly also meddling more with the genomes than we should to test the limits of what we can do, of course, under the supervision of the one, the only, Dr. Henry Wu. And on the other hand, there is this big question of how come the dinosaurs are thriving on this island? Why didn't they kick it thanks to the lysine deficiency? So maybe we'll be sending ranger teams into the wild to capture some of the dinosaurs to study them or observe them in the wild the way we know we will be observing dinosaurs in the habitats for status updates. We might find some nests with eggs to figure out that the dinosaurs are breeding. I think they have to acknowledge that, otherwise it doesn't make any sense. But I really don't think we will be seeing any baby dinosaurs. I can't stress that enough. We could also have a mission where we have to track down the Spinosaurus because it's decimating the ecosystem. Similar to the Allosaurus mission that we saw in the campaign where we have to use clues to track it down. Because I'm guessing they would want to use that gameplay style more than once. And there might even be a mini mission off island to retrieve some escaped Pteranodon. Because even though the Pteranodon only escaped in the movie because the characters left the gates open, this is a what if scenario in which anything can happen. Maybe the Pteranodon on just break out because the metal of the aviary is so rusted. I don't think we will be capturing and containing all dinosaurs. I think this Chaos Theory mode is going to show us the beauty of Site B. We can see that the Chaos Theory mode is titled Isosorna Site B after all, and part of rebuilding the facility might be protecting it from wild dinosaurs, keeping the dinosaurs out instead of the usual objective of keeping the dinosaurs in. While dinosaurs attacking the facility could be something we're faced with on a regular basis, requiring us to upgrade our security. Story-wise, this might also be where the Dr. Wu hybrids come in, that we've seen mentioned in the UI. The Stegoceratops, the Ankylodocus, and the Spinoraptor, presumably. I think this will be the mission that has us making those hybrids. It would be a nice surprise if they chuck in one or two extra hybrids. 
even though that's not the direction the movie franchise is taking, these what-if scenarios are the perfect excuse to do that and have Dr. Wu perfect his hybrid research through some trial and error. Not everyone is a big fan of the hybrids, but it would be only one small part of the game, and some people are a really big fan of hybrids, and it would be an awesome little thing for them to play with. Story-wise, I think it would fit really, really well here. Fast forward a decade and a half, and we have Jurassic World. Stupid people get outsmarted by a dinosaur. Or an homage to that 1993 movie that you really, really, really loved. Or how to drive people mad with one costume choice. Or the Mercedes-Benz GLE 450 AMG Coupe. 367 horsepower with a top speed of 248 kilometers per hour. Experience raw power and speed while escaping dangerous dinosaurs without compromising on the luxury. In Jurassic World, we finally see the park in its full glory. But disaster strikes as it always does in this franchise. This time around because someone, not naming any names, someone decided to use the tracker to locate the most dangerous carnivore ever only after leaving the scene and letting three innocent people go inside the exhibit. The Indominus breaks out and wreaks havoc on the park, destroying it and its reputation beyond repair. It takes more teeth in the form of the Holy Trinity, Rexy, Blue and the Moza, to take down the Indominus. But at that point, it is already too late for the park to recover. Okay, so remember that for Jurassic Park, I said I'd explain more later on why I think they won't take the route of rebuilding a destroyed Jurassic Park well, later is now. I think instead of rebuilding a destroyed Jurassic Park, we will be rebuilding the destroyed Jurassic World instead, which will pose more of a challenge due to its sheer size. It's a much more complex and expansive park. The what if question could be, what if Jurassic World was never abandoned? Something along those lines. And unlike the Chaos Theory mode for the first three movies, which had us start out with a really minimal park slash facility, like really just the bare bones of it, for this time around, they could give us a fully fledged, albeit destroyed, Jurassic World. Because that might be what we've already been shown in this shot from the Death Diary from a few weeks ago. It's not the most accurate recreation of Jurassic World ever, but it's clearly modeled after it as well as can be expected, using the tools we know we will have in the game. So someone put some effort into recreating Jurassic World, so they already have that to work with and possibly give that to us. To work with. Maybe the park eventually gets upgraded with the proper T-Rex kingdom as the game is still being developed, who knows. I think we'll get dropped in as the Indominus is doing her rampage. One of the first things we'd have to do is shut down the park, deactivate all attractions and open the shelters to get our guests to safety. Just like what was the case with the Spinoraptor in Secrets of Dr. Wu, tranquilizer darts will simply prove to be ineffective on the Indominus and just like in Return to Jurassic Park and of course the Jurassic World movie itself, we have to set free more teeth to deal with the threat. I'm not quite sure if it's going to be the Holy Trinity, because I don't think marine reptiles can interact with anything outside of the tank. But we have already seen in the Allosaurus campaign mission that the game can have a brief cutscene at times. So maybe we get a cutscene of Blue and Rexy attacking the Indominus together, and maybe the Indominus gets close to the tank, kind of teasing us. But because this is an alternate reality, maybe it just runs away. Because I don't think we'd kill her in this story. We'd want to keep the Indominus so we can enjoy her in all her terrifying glory. So the fight between Rexy and Blue and the Indominus Rex is going to play out differently, and the result will be three injured dinosaurs that we have to recapture and heal. Maybe that's where the rangers come in and using flares or maybe themselves as bait, they lure the Indominus into a high security enclosure that we were instructed to build right before. That or the Indominus does get killed and we'd have to incubate a new one, but first research new genomes to make her more docile. Whatever the case, after she's either captured or killed, we need to fix the park. So going out with the ranger teams to repair buildings and fences and reboot power stations. Getting the safety rating back up could potentially be a big factor in this chaos theory mode. That could be one of the missions, to earn back the trust of our guests and get a safety rating of 100%, something like that. And maybe on top of everything, we'll be dealing with crippling lawsuit costs, sort of reminiscent of the Hammond Foundation fees that we know from the challenge mode gameplay. And that is going to make it very difficult to make the park a financial success again. 
Logan. Now onto the final movie so far. As an aside, we are definitely getting a Chaos Theory mode for Dominion when it comes out, either as a free update or as I theorized previously in a paid DLC. There's even a spot open for it. Anyway, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Old man finds forever home for abandoned animals. Or orphan ends life as we know it with the press of a button. Or Pawn Stars Lockwood Edition. Mount Sibo is about to erupt, the second extinction level event that the dinosaurs will face. Society is split on whether the dinosaurs should be rescued or not, with Claire leading an organization dedicated to the conservation of the dinosaurs. An old business partner of John Hammond that we've never heard of before gives her all the tools she needs to save the dinosaurs, a team to go capture them, and a remote island to house them on. Her ex, Owen, tags along to retrieve Blue. Unfortunately, it was all a lie. The dinosaurs are not taken to another island, but to the mainland instead, where they are auctioned off. In the meantime, Dr. Wu has made a new hybrid that does some spoopy things in the manor before being killed. The story ends with the clone girl setting all the dinosaurs free. Again, the Chaos Theory mode for Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom can go two ways, I think. And neither of those ways involve Lockwood Manor. A lot of people want to see that, but it just doesn't work with the gameplay. We can't go inside buildings, so all Lockwood Manor would be is a building we'd be looking down on. Also, unlike the amphitheater, it's very limited. The amphitheater, if we do unlock it and get to use it wherever we want, can go through a simple name change and then be usable at any location. It would be a lot of work to recreate the manor for a single purpose, because are we really going to be putting that in any other park? Are we going to be putting this Bruce Wayne looking manor in our beautiful parks all across the world? So if not at the manor at which half the movie takes place, then where? Well, the obvious option would be Isla Nublar, but it could have also been Sanctuary. Isla Nublar has a big pro and a big con. Pro, there's an erupting volcano. That's cool. Con, there's an erupting volcano. Before getting to play the Chaos Theory mode for San Diego, I thought I had the Chaos Theory mode for Fallen Kingdom all figured out. But seeing the title for it in the menu really messed with my prediction. I thought for sure we would be going to Sanctuary and the what if question would have been, what if it wasn't all a lie? What if the dinosaurs were really rescued and brought to Sanctuary? But then I saw the title of the Chaos Theory mode for Fallen Kingdom and it's Return to Isla Nublar. And I thought, Gah! It might surprise you that I'd want to go to Sanctuary because a lot of you are probably having traumatic flashbacks to the Claire Sanctuary DLC when I mentioned that island. But I had a really cool idea for a story and game mechanic there. So I'm going to pitch you my idea for what Fallen Kingdom on Sanctuary could have entailed, like a what if within the what if, what ifception if you will. And then I'll talk more about what I think we're actually going to get and why I don't particularly like that. What I was thinking was we could arrive at Sanctuary to oversee the arrival of the dinosaurs being brought in from Nublar. Maybe what we would have had to do was set up temporary quarantine pens for the dinosaurs, where we monitor them and nurse them back to health and then release them into the wild. The wild being the area of the map that we'd have access to, and what we would have had to do was terraform that area to suit the needs of the dinosaurs and make sure that they all have territory that fulfilled their requirements and keep competing species as far away from each other as possible. The focus of this Chaos Theory story would have been on dinosaur health and well-being. My only question mark with that scenario was how would the Indoraptor come into play? Because I do expect that it will be in the game, although it is technically not yet confirmed. But I thought of a solution to this, albeit a little inelegant. But let's say that while we were building the perfect sanctuary for the rescued dinosaurs, Dr. Wu had been working on the Indoraptor at the Lockwood Manor, and the part of the story where Blue, Owen and Claire get taken there still takes place. So that part of the movie still happened off screen for us. And then when Blue finally got flown over to us, much later than expected, we would have gotten voiceover from knockoff Chris Pratt about what transpired and that another creature will be flown in shortly and we need to set up a high security pen in advance. Blue and the Interruptor would have both been injured from their fight and we'd have to cure them. Then the player could have been faced with a dilemma and maybe we'd be forced to make the wrong choice initially. Maybe the game could have forced us to release the Indoraptor into the wild. You know, 
see how it goes. But then, of course, it would have inevitably gone on a murder spree and we would have had to recapture it and keep it in an enclosure. And that could have been the end of the Chaos Theory mode for Fallen Kingdom. That was how I had envisioned it and I like how it sounds because it's very different from what I think the other what-if stories are going to be like. But since it's called Return to Isla Nublar, what I think is going to happen is we will have to rebuild Jurassic World years after it was abandoned, with the what-if question being, what if Mount Sibo had never erupted? The cool thing about this is I would hope that we'd get some sort of mechanic where the buildings actually look overgrown and weathered, and only when we repair them do they return to their former glory. If that's going to be the case, it would be really cool to see the park that way. But then after that, it's just going to be another rebuild a park. The same exact park that I'm predicting we're already going to be playing around with in the Chaos Theory mode for Jurassic World, which I'm now hoping actually to be wrong wrong about because that's going to be so weird rebuilding the same park twice. And we already know that San Diego Chaos Theory mode really is also just going to be build a park. So if I'm right about this, again which I'm now hoping I'm not, four out of the five Chaos Theory modes is going to be build a park. Take this bit that we started and finish it. I guess since the campaign is not focused on building theme parks at all, maybe that balances it out. Maybe once we're done with campaign, we're just craving building theme parks so much that we don't mind that is going to be the objective in four out of five Chaos Theory modes. But I kind of think my idea for Sanctuary was pretty cool, really utilizing the territory system and creating a perfectly balanced environment. But perhaps elements of that we are already going to be seeing and doing in Isla Sorna Side B. Who knows, maybe Return to Isla Nublar goes full Claire Sanctuary and is actually going to be another two-parter in which we first rescue the dinosaurs from Nublar and then take them to Sanctuary. And Frontier can redeem themselves for that dull and exhausting DLC from the first game. Whatever the case is, I am still very much looking forward to Chaos Theory mode. I'm really more excited about it than the campaign and challenge mode. Although, of course, nothing beats Sandbox. If you want to join me for my playthroughs starting November 9th, then subscribe to the channel and ring the bell if you don't trust YouTube, which you definitely shouldn't. And you can already check out my San Diego Chaos Theory gameplay on the channel. It is going to be linked at the end of this video. In summary, Jurassic Park, what if the park had never been sabotaged? Jurassic Park 3, what if InGen continued research on Site B? Jurassic World, what if Jurassic World wasn't abandoned? Fallen Kingdom, what if we built the dinosaurs a perfect sanctuary? Or more likely, what if Mount Sibo didn't erupt? Again, let me know in a comment down below what you think. I'd love to read your ideas. If you liked my ideas or at least enjoyed the video, prod the algorithm with a thumbs up so my effort was not in vain. And of course, subscribe for more. Thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing, and until next time, enjoy the anticipation. Mm -hmm.